Elizabeth and I'm here to share my birth story today. Um, I have two children aged three and one and a half. So I guess for me um, my biggest challenge during my first pregnancy um, and my second as well but in particular my first was physically I was extremely unwell so I was a very very healthy person. I used to exercise, I have a very physically demanding job and I used to be go 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 all the time and when I got pregnant a few weeks in I developed hyperemesis, I was vomiting all the time, I was sick, I needed IVs, I was so so sick. Everything that you can imagine I went through. I had um, blood pressure problems, I had diabetes problems, I had bleeding issues and I was fine and I, what happened was I had to quit working um, around the third month into my pregnancy. I was then put on total bed rest for the entirety of my pregnancy. So um, it was a physical and a mental shock for me because I had never had any health issues before. The maximum I've ever had is a cold, nothing more than that. And all of a sudden I'm on total 24 seven bed rest. So physically and mentally that was really hard to adjust to for me. I also had a fear that I might lose the baby because I was bleeding so much throughout my pregnancy. Um, so that would have been the biggest challenge for me. It really is, unless you go through it, you can't imagine how hard it was um, to just be lying on a bed all the time, only getting up for meals and then lying back down again for months, literally. You know, uh, no mental stimulation. Everything stopped, you know, and I was so nauseous all the time. I couldn't even, people used to tell me, you know, watch a movie, read a book, you know, catch up on all that. I couldn't because I was so nauseous. I was vomiting. 18, 20 times a day for several months, you know, so I couldn't do anything and that was very hard. And then after the birth of baby, um, I think for me, one of the, um, well, I faced several challenges, but I think first and foremost, I'd like to just talk about not having that immediate connection to the baby. And this is really, this was really hard for me to describe to anyone or to even tell anyone because I was so afraid of them, you know, judging me or thinking what kind of mom I am to say that I don't have that instant love or that instant bond that a lot of mothers describe, a lot of mothers say even before the baby's born, they feel it. And if not, then when, as soon as baby comes out, they feel it. Now, I didn't feel that, you know, I, I, I love the baby, but I didn't have that emotional attachment. And that for me came after several weeks of being with Bub, you know, and bonding with the baby and doing things for the baby. It took several weeks for ba when baby's personality started to come through and she was smiling back at me and all is when I started to really grow that emotional bond. So, and I think that's completely okay. So, you know, I just want to put it out there for anyone else who might be feeling, might not or might not be feeling that instant bond as soon as baby's born and you think you're supposed to, nothing's wrong. If you're not, it will come um, as time goes. And then I guess um, another massive challenge for me was just coping with the biggest change in my life. So of course you hear about all the tiredness, the lack of sleep, you hear everything, but going through it, you know, um, and having to care for another person 24 7 you're suddenly responsible for another human being you know um the tiredness the lack of sleep the fatigue you know the lack of a any personal time it's a big adjustment like hearing it about it and going through it is two completely different things and i don't think i might have um coped the all that well you know going through it so uh one of the biggest so one of the things i did to rectify that was just accept the help that i was getting so sometimes like the people offering me help might not be doing things in exactly the way i want them to do it for baby but then i realized that if i'm going to correct them every time or if i'm going to say no you don't do it i'll only do it because my way i feel is better then i'm never going to catch a break and that's so important so even if things are not 100% done your way if some, by someone you know if they are offering you help take the help you know, um, let them do it and that's fine. Um, another problem was a breastfeeding challenge. I tried, but it was not working out for me. It was affecting my mental health and I chose to formula feed. Unfortunately, I was shamed for that by medical professionals and family as well. Not everyone, but certain people. Um, it was really not, not on. It's not on. I don't, I believe fed is best. However, you know, you choose to do it. Um, it was affecting my mental health a lot. The fact that I wasn't able to breastfeed, um, the fact that, you know, 
it was just very physically draining. I was getting, you know, um, it was affecting my mood. And so basically, uh, for me, I think it was a right decision to actually stop and to formula feed because it just made me a hundred times happier. It made baby a hundred times happier because they were finally, I think, getting full. Until then, my bab was constantly crying, even though she would feed for more than an hour and then she would still be crying after that. So, um, so I think that was something that I should not have been shamed on, but it happened. And, um, you know, I'm still glad that I chose to breastfeed at the end, uh, sorry, to formula feed at the end of the day. Um, for me, fed is best.